Chapter 17 As they made their way down the hillside, the four boys kept a sharp lookout for the Padrone search party. They hoped that Father Tommaso's mention of the North had worked, but they were still careful to stay well out of sight. After walking for what seemed like hours, they agreed to stop for a rest. Shh, listen, Francesca whispered. You can still hear the bells. Dominic listened, and he could just make out the faint ringing of bells in the distance. We've never lived beyond the sound of the bell tower, Francesco said sadly. It will seem very strange not to hear them. Maybe they will have a bell tower in New York, Antonio suggested. They all grew quiet again, listening for the familiar ringing. I wonder how many men it will take to bury him, Salvatore said suddenly. Who? asked Aunt Antonio asked. Randizzi, of course, Salvatore answered. They're going to need a giant casket to hold him. Francesco nodded his head as he took the cloth sack off his back. Antonio pulled out the shoes and put them on. They look awfully big for your little feet, Dominic couldn't help notice. Antonio frowned. They were Papa's shoes, he said. They fit me best, Francesco admitted, but we take turns wearing them for mass and on feast days. Salvatore and I have to stuff them with rags to make them fit, Antonio explained. Can I wear them now? he asked his brother, now that we're going to America. No, you haven't any rags to stuff them with here, and it's too far a walk yet, Francesco told him. I'll carry them in my pack, and when we reach America, you can put them on. "'Why does he get to wear them and not me?' Salvatore snapped, pounding his chest with his fist and pulling one of the shoes off Antonio's foot. "'Your feet smell worse than mine,' Antonio retorted, as he tried to get the shoe back. "'Stop it, you two, Francesco ordered. "'How many times must I tell you about sharing? "'Now why can't you figure this out for yourselves?' "'I can figure it out,' Antonio bragged. "'I'll wear this shoe, and he can wear that one.' Dominic grinned, and Francesco shook his head. "'As ridiculous as two donkeys trying to pull a cart from both ends,' Francesco sighed. "'What will you do when you get to America and you don't have me to settle your squabbles?' This last question hung in the air like a heavy cloud. "'What will we do without you, Francesco?' Antonio whimpered. But Francesco got a hold of himself quickly. "'You will do your best to remember that no matter where we go, we are always a family. "'This is not the end of the Candianos.' "'He smiled. "'It is just the beginning of the Candianos in America. "'We'll be a family there, too, I promise.' "'Everyone seemed to brighten at this thought, "'and they once again set off on the paths down the hillside. "'Antonio did his best to keep up with Salvatore, who was practically running.' He was so anxious to see the ship. It was only Francesco who kept stopping and turning around, keeping a constant watch for the Padrone's men. With the village finally out of sight and the bells out of earshot, Francesco began talking to Violetta, who would often comment with a nod of her head or a blink of her eye. "'I wonder what the journey on the ship will be like,' Salvatore said excitedly. "'I hope Violetta doesn't get sick.' Francesco worried. She's never been out at sea before. Neither have we, Salvatore exclaimed. You're not as sensitive as a goat, Francesco told him. No one is as sensitive as your Violetta, Salvatore quipped. Dominic understood Francesco's concern. If he had Violetta for a pet, he would have felt the same way. With the crimson sun sinking low behind a line of cedar trees, Francesco decided they had best make camp for the night. "'It's no more than a two hours' walk from here to the harbor,' he said. "'But I don't want to get to the city at nightfall. "'The streets are known to be dangerous after dark. "'There are thieves and cutthroats about them. "'So we'll sleep here and leave at first light tomorrow.' "'With all the fresh air and excitement they had had that day, "'Dominic's hunger was growing worse. "'No one else mentioned food or the lack of it. Dominic guessed that they were used to going to bed hungry. They made a soft bed of pine needles, and everyone lay down. As the sky filled with stars and a silvery moon hum above them, they talked in hushed whispers about the journey they were about to make. 
I wonder if there are stars in the sky over America, Antonio murmured. It's not another planet, Dominic said. Of course there are stars in the sky. But sometimes you can't see them because of pollution from the cars and the light from the sodium lamps. Pollution? Cars? Sodium lamps? What are they? Francesco asked. Dominic hesitated, not knowing how to answer. You see, in the America I know, there are lots of cars that you ride around in, but no horses. Horseless carriages? Salvatore asked. We've heard of them. Yes, well, in America, I know everyone has one, and they make the air very dirty. And the sodium lamps are bright orange lights that they use at night to control crime. Everyone grew quiet at this remark. What else do you know of America? Salvatore demanded. Dominic hesitated, not knowing how to answer. Well, I, I guess I know a lot, he finally admitted. Maybe he had relatives who went there before the earthquake, Francesco whispered furtively to Salvatore. That's probably how he knows so much. He got it mixed up in his mind that he was there himself. Nella Poloni's cousin told us of the streets of America were paved with gold, Antonio said, but Emelina's uncles went there and didn't find any. Emelina thought that maybe they were looking on the wrong streets, Salvatore continued, but then they wrote to her mother to say there was only horse manure on the streets like here. So which is it, Salvatore asked, gold or manure?